Well, hello everybody. Today I am going to be in the kitchen making a few pretty simple recipes and a fun gift recipe idea for you. And then um, just getting some things done that I needed to get done in the kitchen. And part of what I am making today is going to be a meal for a family who um, just has been struggling with sickness. So um, just having some generosity during this time of year even if it's just making a meal is something that I think is important so yes you hear my little girl squawking in the background but so is mom life right anyways I have got my apron on and gonna get started with uh, instant pot chili now I've made this chili for you just alone in a easy dump chili recipe and I'll link that in the description box. It's probably about two or three years old, honestly. But I decided to make it in the Instant Pot today. And I've got my fresh tomatoes that were in our freezer in the garage. And I've got some ground beef that I will put in the Instant Pot. I've got my red kidney beans that are cooking in the Instant Pot. And you can use canned everything, really, if you wanted. I just have some garden things that I want to use, so I'm using that up. But like I said, I'll link the recipe in the description box because it is a very simple recipe that is a crowd pleaser. What I love about using the Instant Pot for this is it's all in one pot and then you can keep it warm for the whole day. So if you wanted to make this in the morning for your family, they could graze on it for lunch and then have some for supper. But like I said, I'm making part of it for a family to give as well. So it's just something really easy to make and have warm and also it freezes so well too. So I had the onion and brown, um, browned the hamburger in the Instant Pot after the kidney beans were done being cooked. Dumped the kidney beans back in, added some chili powder, added a jar of salsa, and then added two cans of tomato soup since this was a double batch. I used two pounds of hamburger. But it is, like I said, just super simple. And chili has to be a thick chili for me. It's not some... Um, soupy brothy soup so there is the chili then it was time to make some banana bread because i wanted to give this family something for them to have for breakfast as well so i like to take over a meal i could have in the evening and then prepare something for breakfast for them so i always have frozen bananas on hand i just thawed them in the microwave got my butter thawed that in the microwave as well um, to soften it and then it's just a, such a simple banana bread recipe. It's about five ingredients So it's got the flour baking soda sugar butter a little bit of salt and bananas So it is super super simple made a couple loaves one for us to put in the freezer and one to give away Part of being in the kitchen all day includes some dishes. So I like to do dishes along the way. That way my counter stays more clutter free and I got space then to make the next thing. This recipe is a gift idea. It's called a friendship scone mix and it's just the dry ingredients that I am whipping up because obviously you can't put the wet ingredients in if you're gonna give it in a canister. And so this is from the Gooseberry Patch book. I've used this for so many of my recipes I've shared this holiday season, um, volume number five, but I'll link that in the description box for you too. Actually, I won't link it. I'll have to type it out. Um, but it's really just some fun way to give a gift to somebody who likes baking. I 
I also found a jar out thrifting that I thought I could use to gift it in. That way they can repurpose this jar as well. Mason jars would work also. You could even just put it in a Ziploc baggie if you didn't have a jar, but I thought the jar was a cute touch. I tied the recipe on. I actually have to finish writing the recipe out, put the card on there with a little ribbon and it is ready to give in probably a little oven mitt that I have that I want to share with that person. All right, now it is time to make some sourdough bread because I will have to let that rise for a while. My sourdough, as you can see, is extremely full. So this recipe calls for two cups of sourdough, which I really like because it uses up a lot of your excess sourdough then and then um, four to five cups of other flour. And I use whole wheat flour in my sourdough, so I use whole wheat flour to make the bread. And I'm still tweaking my sourdough as it is not as um, like fluffy as I would like it. So I'm still working on perfecting it. And that is something that I'll probably always be working on is perfecting some bread because bread is a, sometimes a difficult thing to make, but I love doing it. And sourdough is a delicious bread to have and good for you too. So once it gets too difficult to stir with a wooden spoon, it's time to go at it with your hands and incorporate the water, the sourdough starter, the flour, and the salt. And then I let it sit. You're supposed to let it sit for four to 12 hours. I accidentally let it sit for, it was probably more like 18. I let it sit overnight. Um, and then I put it into my two loaf pans. And so that could be part of the issue is I punched it down before I went to bed, but I didn't want to bake it when I was ready to go to bed. So it had like a double rise time, which I've heard works sometimes for people. It didn't work too well for me because it honestly then didn't rise anymore in the pan and it was a little bit flat, as you'll see come out here. But it still had that nice fermented taste, actually extra fermented taste because it rose a lot longer. So since I am sharing the chili with a family, I decided to put their half in a Ziploc baggie because that way if they weren't gonna eat it that night, they could stick it in the freezer. And I just use a um, plastic storage container to fill it. It makes it so much easier to fill and um, that way I can have it open while I'm dumping the chili in there. This is not really food related, but I make my daughter's body soap and hair soap, and it's just cast oil soap, liquid coconut oil, a little glycerin, and some essential oils, and I just love having that. I've used this recipe for two and a half years, and it works well for toddlers and babies. Well, it's almost evening time already for me in this video and I'm filming here and so I wanted to end the day with a hot chocolate. Um, this is not the healthiest. I do just like a half scoop of Nestle hot chocolate. I like their flavor the best. Some baking cocoa, 100% cocoa powder, and then a little stevia and some cinnamon and put the hot water in there and it's just it's really good because it has some of the sweetness from the nestle hot chocolate and a little stevia and then you have to have a little whipped cream so i hope you enjoyed being in the kitchen today with me and you can use some of these recipes for your family or for sharing